Hi ladies, if you haven't watched part one yet of how to love your husband, go ahead and like, you know, go to this video over here. This is the second part to that where I will just continue to tell you some more tips and tricks that you can up the spice level in loving your husband, especially around the celebration of love. Valentine's. Hopefully these make it out by Valentine's. If not, that's okay because every day should be Valentine's Day in marriage. But you love me today. Let's run. Remember, the last one I'm getting to is the most important one men have told me, and it just might surprise you like it did me when I heard it for the first time. We're gonna jump into number five. Show interest in his hobbies, or at least be with him, and don't complain. You don't have to love his hobbies, but you can at least be with him while he does them. Like for instance, my husband loves car videos. And so I am not as interested in cars. I will try to take some interest in it, but while he's watching his car videos, I will sit next to him. Maybe I will read a book. Maybe I will write, but I'll be there with him and I don't complain about it. It's a special time for him to unwind from the day and just kind of, you know, de-brain. If your guy actually doesn't mind being alone during his hobbies, that's not a terrible thing. Men and women once in a while I think actually benefit with a little alone time, especially if you lean more naturally introvert. You kind of need to reload a little bit before you go around people. And maybe while he does his hobby, if you aren't busy taking care of the kids, maybe that would be a great time for you to do something you like as well that maybe he's not a fan of. Maybe he's not into scrapbooking, you know what I mean? Now, I am not excusing multiple hours of video games and anime while he neglects your relationship and his children's relationships. That is not what I'm talking about. What I am saying is after all the hours of work that he goes through, he doesn't need to spend every moment of every day with you. Sometimes you need your own alone time. Think about how many times we go to the bathroom just to escape the kids and we stay just a little bit longer, but not too long because they're gonna make it to the pantry and dump out all the flour or diatomaceous earth or get in the fridge and slather themselves with butter. Somehow that managed to happen in the 15 seconds she went to go tinkle. Clever little people. Even though you are a team and a family, you also both are individuals. Sometimes we don't all relax and decompress the same way. For instance, my husband loves building things and learning about cars. When he learns about cars, I can just cuddle up with him and be with him while he watches the newest Toyota releases. But if he's making something or building something, sometimes I might just get in the way and he would feel, I don't know, a little um, little bad that he's not giving me attention while he's doing his project. So sometimes it's better that I'm just in the house cooking or taking care of the kids or doing something I need to get done. My husband will often return the favor and let me have my alone or creativity time by letting me edit YouTube videos or film or write. Number six speak words of praise. This one I feel like should be a no-brainer, but sometimes in marriage, we think we've already said it, but we have to keep in mind every day is a new day with new challenges and our husbands need that continuous feedback that what they are doing is good and meaningful and that they're doing a good job. So please remember to just keep praising him when he does something good. Don't lie and praise him for something that he's not actually doing because that will make your words meaningless. You want your words to remain meaningful. So whatever it is he is doing things right and doing an excellent job in, make sure to praise him for that. Is he hardworking? Does he have a nice smile? Does he take care of his body? Is he loving to his children? Is he respectful and kind and caring to his parents? Does he think deeply? Is he a really good friend? Praise him for those things. Look him in the eye and not just in passing say I love you, but look him in the eye and say, I love you. Make sure that you take the time to communicate the passion you still feel for him. Because sometimes in marriage, when we do things on autopilot, we can start to feel like things are taken for granted or maybe they're just not as strong and passionate or as intentional as they used to be. So make sure you're taking that time to stop and be intentional with your eye contact and your words. 
especially when you think you've already said it. He may need to hear it again today, even if he heard it yesterday. Number seven. So when I have interviewed or talked to other men, this is the one that they have said is the most important. This might shock you ladies like it did me the first time I heard it, but men hold a lot higher value on respect than we do. When asked if you could have just one of these two, love or respect, men said respect. I know, crazy, because that is not what I would have picked or likely you. I mean, I really want respect, but I would choose love over respect because I can still feel loved by somebody even if I do not feel respected by them. But for men, they're wired a little differently. If they don't feel respected, they don't feel loved. They're just different in that area. Like, of course we want both love and respect, but what men would choose and what women would choose most likely on average is very different. Most men that I have talked to really highly value respect and most of us women, we just wanna be loved and, and cherished and valued and sometimes we're okay if our guy thinks we're a little dork or a little dumb. We just are, not always, but sometimes. We can still feel loved, you know what I mean? We'd still like both though. I think everybody wants both. It makes sense though that guys would think like that. Keep this in mind, men are the protectors and the breadwinners in the marriage relationship. They need something deep in their soul to drive them. The drive to be respected and to be respectable might be just that. So just keep that in mind when you think about how your husband receives love. If you think his opinion is dumb, don't just right out of the gate tell him he's dumb. Ask him some questions on his thought. If you still think the thought is flawed, humbly and kindly challenge him. He might change his mind or figure out that his thoughts are kind of flawed just by you gently guiding him with questions. But sometimes you might find just by hearing him out and listening that he might actually be correct on an issue even though you might have previously thought that position was whack. Men are wired differently from women and they think differently from women. And sometimes their different thought processes are not very recognizable by us. And so sometimes we mistake that as less intelligent. Their thought process actually isn't dumb. It might be different from the way we think. We need to hear them out because they might just be right on an issue and we are just not viewing it from the same lens. If he is wrong and his thinking is very flawed, once again, kindly and humbly challenge him. Start by asking questions and listening and then challenge the thinking process. And in the end, just pray for him. Especially if those thought processes are destructive, you really do wanna challenge him and help him grow. But make sure you're praying and being humble about the process. Just think about how you would like to be treated. We hate it, ladies, when somebody just comes out of the gate and tells us our thoughts are stupid, when we feel like we are not being heard. Keep that in mind about your husband, okay? Do unto others as you would like, done unto yourself. While also keeping in mind that he's a man and he thinks differently. The man is the head of the household. That doesn't make you a brainless robot. That does mean he gets the final say when he is making final decisions for the family, as long as he is operating under God's authority. If he's asking you to do something that is in direct conflict with God's word, obviously obey God first. For example, if he is telling you to kill the baby in your womb, God tells us we should not murder. That is an example of being in direct conflict with God's will and where you no longer submit to your husband in that area and you submit to God. But that's not a situation I'm talking about. If he is not telling you to do or asking you to do something that is in conflict with God's word, then submit to him. If he makes it clear that he does not want you loading the dishes with the knives facing upwards, just stop it. You really shouldn't be doing it anyways. Or if he says don't buy a new puppy, don't freaking think you're gonna be cute by coming home with a new puppy. Just don't do it. Just don't do the opposite of what he asks you to do. I really don't think I could be any clearer on this. Just don't do the things that he is asking you not to do especially if they're not in conflict with God's word or will. Simple. Do you agree or disagree with me? Let me know your thoughts down below. Just be respectful about it. Have a good day. I'm rooting for you.